Hello and welcome to Theo Trade. My name is Doc Severson and this is the Theo Knight Report for a Thursday, September 8th. You know, through just about any measure that we can come up with, we're seeing extraordinarily low volatility right now. Now, when I say volatility, I'm talking about the price volatility or realized volatility, however you measure it. So we can use something like ATR, and ATR is the average true range, and it's using a 14 period. So it's looking at, in this case, just the last 14 bars, and what's the average true price range within there. Okay, so we could look at that. We could also look at 30-day historical volatility, which is at 20-year lows. So we have to ask ourselves, and when we, the last time that we saw this amount of low volatility, what happens to that? Well, usually we start to get some downside action. Even if it doesn't last for very long, usually that low volatility reverts to the mean and creates higher volatility from there. Or in this case, as we're looking at this indicator, a larger price range intraday. Now, obviously we're not talking about the financial crisis where we had an ATR of 60 points a day on the S&P, nor are we looking at you know, areas down here where we had an ATR of about eight points, right? So those are kind of extremes that we've seen, but we have seen very, very low ATR during the periods like from 2003 to early 2007, where we had an ATR that was about single digits back then. Now, I, I believe this is a very, very different market that we have now versus what we saw back then primarily because there was competition for the investing dollar. Back then, there were many, many places that you could put your money versus the stock market, such as real estate or fixed interest income that were very, very competitive with the returns that they had back then. So this is why we had so little volatility and so much competition for the investing dollar. So now today, it's a little bit different. So we, we did have quite a bit of volatility over the last... 12 months to this point, but now we've kind of reverted in the opposite direction. So eventually we're going to revert back to the mean. But until we do, what is somebody to do? What is an investor to do right now? Well, I think one of the biggest traps that somebody can fall into right now is just looking at this and saying, wow, that's a flat market, right? That's a flat market. Let's just go ahead and sell premium on both sides. Something like the iron condor is typically thought of with that. So when we look at markets just going sideways like this for an extended period of time, that's the temptation to fall into is to say, wow, look at this. I could just put a vertical credit spread up here and another credit spread down here. So call spreads and put spreads make an iron condor. And you know all the, the basic advantages to that with uh, you're only getting margin on the one side of the trade instead of two. Double the returns, right? Well, what you're going to find is it's going to be double the pain when the thing finally starts to move. What you'll see is typically we'll see some type of breakout move which fails and gets sold into. So you get nailed on this and then all of a sudden the selling comes into gear and you get nailed on this side of the trade. So I think this is going to be a very, very painful trade in the near future for people that are not that experienced and haven't gone through that kind of quiet markets moving into noisy markets again. So what then can you do? One of the things that you can do is play a long Vega trade, something like calendar spreads, where if we do get some movement either up or down, especially to the downside, it's not gonna necessarily hurt the trade that much because of the fact that implied volatility will overall rise and be able to assist the trade. But the other thing that we can do, and maybe this is the simpler way to go, is actually to cut your time frame. So we're used to thinking of things in this time frame, which is the daily time frame. If the daily time frame is not moving, let's go to a time frame that is moving. Now, if we take the same chart and we, if we go down to a one hour time frame, so basically this is about six and a half times faster than a daily chart, right? So going down to a 60 minute chart, and this is just showing the regular trading hours on the SPX, then we can see we have plenty of movement for the price to be able to move with it. Okay, well, how do we work with something like that? Well, we can sell or buy the extremes with something like this. If we add some studies 
And let's go ahead and add a volatility study like a Bollinger Band to this. So Bollinger Band is going to be adaptive to the volatility and show kind of the extremes of where we expect to see the price kind of revert back to the mean. And the mean in this case is going to be represented by this moving average, the blue line in the middle. So we can see that we have several opportunities within here if we're just going to zoom in on a 60 minute chart where we can either fade this move to the upside, we can buy this move to the downside. Again, anytime we have an extreme where the price runs into the bands, we can take a fade of that move and take the opposite direction of that. And usually what we're gonna find is within a couple of bars, in this case, a couple of hours, we're gonna have an opposite reaction to that move. Anytime we go too far in one direction, we're gonna have an opposite move to that. Right. Anytime we get an opposite, a move which goes to too far as measured by the Bollinger Bands, we're going to get some kind of reversion back to the mean. So as you can see, it's just kind of a matter of perspective with that. Now, if we were going to trade something like this, what could we do on an intraday basis to take one of these trades? Well, first of all, if we were truly going to trade intraday, I think the thing to use would be not necessarily the SPX with that great big notional value and those big wide spreads in there, although the weeklies are getting a lot better. But I would definitely be using something like the spiders with tons of options, some great chains, a lot of granularity in terms of the strike prices that you can use. And we don't have to worry about event risk like earnings or anything like that. So we can use this just about any time that we want to. So what kind of strategy would we do with something like this? Do we sell spreads or buy spreads? Or Well, to me, the easiest strategy for something like this is just with the good old in-out spread. So if we were going to trade something, let's assume that we were going to be taking something bullish here, maybe to the upside, what we would look at doing so even though this isn't a signal, but let's just say we wanted to take something long here, a lot of times what we want to do is to use as little as time as possible with this. So as little time as possible. So one day may be cutting it a little thin, right? Since if we're going to buy the spread, we're going to still pay the same amount as if we paid for a week of time value. So that may not necessarily work as well. So I would say we want at least a couple of days here. So in this case, I'm going to go out instead of to tomorrow, the options expiring tomorrow, maybe give myself about a week here for those. And if we were going to take a bullish trade here, what we could do is buy one option that's in the money and sell one option that's out of the money. And the spread width is going to define the risk that we're taking with this. So currently with a price about 218 and a half, we could maybe take the 218 to 19 spread. So we're going to buy a vertical here. We're going to buy the 218. We're going to sell the 219 and we're going to be paying about 57 cents. Now there's a little bit of volatility skew in there. If we were to turn around and buy the opposite option. So if we were going to buy the 219 put, and sell the 218 so the opposite side of that so 218 219 and we're going to find that that's actually going to be below a 50 cent debit so this is the benefit uh, the blessing and the curse here of volatility skew as it affects the calls and the puts so there is a slight advantage to the put spreads versus the call spreads when it comes to this. Now again, you can define the risk by the width of the spread. You can do a $1 wide spread. You can do a 50 cent wide spread. So with a 50 cent wide spread, you'd be basically paying $25 for that spread, risking $25 to seek 25. But the more narrow the spread that you pick, the more the commission load is going to incur on that particular trade. So typically we do these about $2 wide, but if you're doing quick intraday ones, perhaps you want to just go with something a little bit more narrow for this trade. Now the other question that comes up is maybe you're saying, well, why don't I just why don't I just buy way more time than I need? And this is a very common thing to do when we're buying just like a call option. 
typically what we're taught when we learn about investing and it's usually by as a proxy for stock we buy long call options 70 delta and the money right and we're usually taught well buy about twice as much time as you think you need to make sure that you have enough time for the move to play out well that's great with long calls but when it comes to things like vertical spreads if you buy too much time the spread is not going to be very responsive so you may get a nice move from the bottom of the envelope up to the top of the envelope and you may not find that your spread gains very much in value maybe you're only going to get a 10 to 20 percent gain on something like that whereas if you had picked something with maybe a couple of days out to maybe five days then you're going to see a much stronger move for that now that's due to a couple of reasons first of all that short option is losing more in time value but more than that it's the gamma of the trade kicking in and working to your favor and of course as you know the closer that we get to expiration the more the gamma works either for or against you depending on which way the trades working so again the point of today's video is when we're in feast or famine and right now we're actually in famine as it relates to volatility you have to just take a different view of what the markets is giving you and certainly if we kind of pull out our microscopes and zoom in on time then there's plenty of volatility it does put more burden on you to actually be there though so this is not something that you know somebody that's working for a living or only has a few minutes of access to the market a day is going to effectively be able to do but in either case I think we'll be shaking loose of this uh, this volatility funk here in short order I would say within the next couple of weeks I think we will get moving again and I think it's going to be a relief I think for most people as uh, as we get some more of that daily volatility back into the market all right that is it for today's video thanks for listening I hope that helps and we'll see you this weekend